Today's case is very odd, unique, and very controversial. A girlfriend allegedly pushed or convinced her boyfriend to self-harm himself, which resulted in a beautiful, smart young man to take his own life. There is a debate rather if it's a crime or free speech when you text nasty messages to others. Also, I do have a personal story that's kind of related, but not really, I don't wanna say it's related, that influences my personal two cents about this case. Would love to know what you guys think about this argument at the end of the video. And in honor of today's case and the topic of mental health and also reaching 500,000 subscribers, I want to say a huge thank you and a portion of today's video will go to a donation to a charity or foundation. I'm not sure which one yet, so if you guys have any suggestion, leave a comment down below. I know in every single video, I have pretty good hair, I would like to say, because a lot of you guys always ask for my hair care on my social media and YouTube, and I strictly only use Function of Beauty shampoo and conditioners for my hair and it's been over a year now since I've been using it and thank you so much to Function of Beauty for supporting my channel. Hair care is so important and the healthier hair you have, the healthier you look overall, at least I believe in that. Function of Beauty is a custom hair care where you only take a quick quiz about your hair profile, goals, and history and voila, you have the perfect shampoo and conditioner just for your hair. My hair profile is wavy, it's medium. An oily level is normal, especially in the winter. My goals are to rejuvenate, soothe scalp, straighten, maintain hair color and to make it voluminous like this today. You could choose the fragrance and the color of your products. I've been using Function of Beauty for over a year now. I haven't used any other shampoos. I can never go back to the drugstore ones because these are high quality fit for just my hair. There's no parabens, sulfates, it's 100% vegan and cruelty free and it's made from recycled plastic. It's delivered straight to my house so in over a year I've never went out and bought shampoo and conditioner. Now it's easier than ever to try Function of Beauty Signature Hair Duo. You can get 20% off your first 16 ounce cut custom set when you click my link and subscribe. Just clicking the link down below helps the creator and their channel out so much. And again, today's portion will go to a donation. Thank you so much to Function of Beauty. Today's case, they call this like the 2.0 version of the Conrad, Roy, and Michelle Carter's case. If you guys remember the bizarre texting case, the trial of Michelle Carter, the girlfriend Michelle was convicted of involuntary manslaughter, pretty much planning and influencing her boyfriend to self-harm himself. Of course, that case is not directly related or similar in details to today's case, but the talk about how young people are texting and using technology to manipulating someone to do something very dangerous is a very hot topic. So this is Inyoung Yu, and she was a 21-year-old Boston College student who was studying economics. Her classmates from, I believe, middle school or high school days describe her as very shy, a little quiet. You know, she seems to be very well behaved, and I believe she grew up or graduated school from Washington. She was born in South Korea, but was naturalized to the US citizenship later on during her youth. And this is Alexander Artula, who was 22 years old, also attending the same Boston college. These two met at Boston College and they decided to start dating. They became official, they were madly in love, and they dated for about a year and a half. Unfortunately, not a lot of information about their private life is released to the internet, so I'm not really sure in detail more about who they were, what kind of students they were, their personalities, so a lot of those are not available. But just based on these pictures, it seems like they're a very youthful, lovely couple. And their smile seems pretty genuine. So when they started dating back in about 2017 or 2018, it seems like they were doing pretty fine until you found out that her boyfriend, Artura, met his ex-girlfriend without telling her. Now, this ex-girlfriend was also in the same school, Boston College, and supposedly, allegedly, Artura was still communicating and meeting his ex-girlfriend. I don't know how many occasions or any more detail about this, but ever since then, Inyoung started to become very, according to the prosecutors, abusive. Their friends also claimed that they saw the toxic behaviors between this relationship, but again, not much information of what they exactly saw is released. Things started to intensify two months before the incidents of this case. For two months, the couple exchanged over 75,000 texts and 47,000 of them came from Inyoung. To put into perspective, that's about almost 800 texts 
per day, exactly 786, or about 1,200 texts between the two. They were also set to FaceTime each other very frequently as well, but you guys, 800 texts is a lot. They literally had to be talking to each other and texting every single hour constantly for that to like amount to that amount. Some people called it like a full-time job to text that much to someone. I mean, low key, you could call that as like a heavy addiction to your phone or communicating through texting. You and Artura also used apps to track each other's GPS. So as long as you turn on the GPS and some kind of app, you could see each other where they are. So in a way, you could tell these couple was literally madly in love with each other or their love was intensified greatly. But I know that sometimes when you're young, you have this feeling of literally wanting to be so attached to someone where you want to know where they are exactly. They have to respond to you to every communications and it can get very overwhelming without you realizing. This is just a little side note, but in my personal opinion, especially when it comes to relationships and dating privacy is very important when it comes to any relationship whether it's friends family because when you start to share literally everything about someone you get into this very vulnerable position and they can have a very very strong impact on your thoughts on your behaviors so you might start to lose a sense of being an individual and thinking for yourself and everything revolves around someone else and not you because when you trust someone you're giving them permissions to do also good in your life such as heal but also bad in your life where it's easier to damage manipulate and control you in a negative way so fast forward from what we only know from what the DA released to the public prosecutor said in quote she physically verbally and psychologically abused or during the year and a half relationship and that the abuse intensified in the days and hours leading to his death they also described it as a power dynamic in the relationship one of the witnesses I believe which was the friends who witnessed their relationships said Atula felt trapped like he had no option but to stay with her because her life was literally in his hands. So I'm going to be reading some of the excerpts from Atura's diary and the conversations between you and Atura because it can be very sad and triggering for some people so if you don't want to read the text messages you can skip this part. On March 26, 2019 in Atura's journal diary he writes she attacks my self-worth. Whenever we argue it always reveals back to the past and how I lied and hurt her before and how she doesn't believe that it won't happen again. Then I, when I agree to end it because she says she's done with me because I'm a horrible retard, that it is just a burden on everyone's life. She in turn threatens to self-harm herself because of me. March 31st, Artura to you in a text. I asked you to stop so many times. You don't even know what's going on in my head right now. I really can't talk to you. I'm breaking down and I'm scared. But if you want to keep on me, you have every right to. I'm having the worst anxiety attack of my life and the voices are so loud. And they all have your voice, the person I love the most in the world. They're all telling me to self-harm. And so did you. I want you and the voices to stop. To stop telling me how worthless and pathetic I am and how much I deserve to. April 1st. Artura to you. You own me, all of me, only you. You have complete control of me emotionally and physically, and you dictate my happiness. You owning all of me includes everything. What I think, what I feel, you own all of that. Your happiness is my priority. Inyang, please, I'll give you whatever you want. I'll leave this earth. Just please don't do anything. Don't hurt yourself anymore. So please, I'll get out of your life. I'll go if you want. I'll erase myself from this world, it'll probably be better off, and I don't have anything anymore anyways, I don't have you. Whatever will make you happy. And here are some texts from you to Artura. You're gonna literally see all of them. A main graduation ceremony. You piece of Go die in hell, you deserve to go kill yourself. There's a main ceremony with all of you and you lie and say you won't see them all. Can you go harm yourself, leave me the alone? And if you don't die, I'm gonna self-harm myself. You can pause the video and read the rest of it if you want. So according to the prosecutors, there were thousands of messages like this. They didn't say hundreds, they said thousands of messages of you sending to Artura to self-harm himself. Explosive, very toxic, manipulative behavior. So in the messages we read that Artura described that he heard voices and no one knows for sure, at least it wasn't released, that if he meant voices literally, like he'd been dealing with something serious mentally. Um, it could be psychosis, hallucinations, schizophrenia, whatever it might be as an example. Or did he say this just as a metaphor to describe just how he 
he was feeling at that time, no one knows. But but based on these messages and what he said about how Yu was controlling him mentally and physically, prosecutors were able to use this and say that Yu exactly knew about Atura's degrading depression and mental health. It was also reported in December 2018. Atura texted some of his friends saying, I'm worried, I need help, I can't do this alone. I'm not sure what the context of this text was or exactly what he was referring to, but his friends called the school's emergency health center hotline to help him. Um, but they were told that Atura was not in immediate danger. But unfortunately, because he was never diagnosed before, no one really knows the extent to what he was going through. Finally, on May 19th, Artula and his family, including his brother, drove from New Jersey where they were living to the Boston College as he was set to graduate on May 20th, the very next day. It was reported that on the night of 19th, he spent the night with you at her dorm. Now, no one knows what really happened in that night, what kind of conversation the two might have had because on May 20th, the very next morning, only 90 minutes before his graduation, Atula went to the car garage and self-harmed himself leading to his death just minutes before his graduation. No one knows except possibly the couple themselves if something happened that night that could have all of a sudden triggered something in Artula or if it was possibly something that was building up to that moment. Somewhere along the timeline, when Yu realized what he was about to do, she sends texts and calls to Artula to plead him to stop. Now here are the texts between the couple of the day before the incident. Artula says goodbye, Yu says stop. You'll have everything once I'm gone. Please stop. Don't leave me like that if you ever love me. If, if you want to show me you love me, stop. I did love you, just not well enough. I'm begging you, please. I'm almost there, please. Where are you? Please, please, please. So somewhere along, Ertula did turn on his GPS location. And that's how Inyoung was able to track where he was. She, I believe, took an Uber. And she also sent the location to Ertula's brother. According to the BuzzFeed news, she arrived three minutes before Ertula passed away. Ultimately, the prosecutors saw you as the initiator, the person that created a dangerous situation for Artula that ultimately led to his death and tried to charge her with involuntary manslaughter. Now, this is not the same thing as murder. Involuntary manslaughter, I believe, is the unintentional killing of another person. During the trial, the district attorney said, Miss Yu was aware of his spiraling depression and suicidal thoughts brought on by her abuse. Instead of helping, she kept it to herself when it came to his conditions. Prosecutors also claimed that he had no history of mental health problems before his relationship with you. So here is where the tricky argument comes in, and I'm going to be talking about what the defense said as well. We can all probably agree that morally, what In Young did just based on the text was absolutely wrong. Sending hate and threats constantly, almost 800 texts a day, that is extreme. I mean, how would that affect someone when you're constantly bombarded with these messages, especially from someone that you trust and call your girlfriend? But is what she did criminal? Is what she did going against the law? And should someone be convicted for sending messages? So defense argued that these were two individuals in a consensual relationship that yes, became toxic, but the responsibility was on both sides. Quote, these two young individuals were very needy emotionally and were involved in a relationship that became a toxic blend of fear, anger, need, and love. Their argument was also that texting was a form of free speech. So some people were saying that, you know, people say things out of anger or when they're upset, you know, you may send some nasty messages to your friends or your family or your loved ones. And a lot of people say, whatever you say through those texts and DMs should be freedom of speech. You should be free to express your feelings, rather you're angry, happy, or sad. Also, some argue that Alex could have done something else, such as blocking you and seeking professional help. That the individual holds the responsibility to help oneself. By law, generally, people have no duty to help or rescue another person. There's no law that says, 
you have to help someone if someone is in a life or death situation. Again, again, morally that might be the right thing to do, but it's not criminal if you decide not to for whatever reason. It also sparked the question, could texting be dangerous? I mean, they are just technically words. They're just technically pixels on our screen. But do we have the responsibility to hold our action through texting? Would things happen different if their conversation was majority over physical communication rather than through our phones? So the question is, how much can texting another person affect one's judgment? Is it really safe to say that we know 100% of the psychology and how much phones affect us if technically phones are still very new? It hasn't been around more than what? 15 years? I mean, phones have been around longer than that, but just the term of texting, DMing one each other, like in a mass communication scale, it hasn't been that long. So it is now up to the judge to decide is what she did ultimately led to his passing? And was what she sent to Atula that morning just before the incident enough proof that she did try to stop him? The defense did fight for the case to be dismissed and very recently In Young took the plea deal which was 10 years probation with 30 months of suspended jail time. Meaning that if she follows the terms of her probation that she can avoid jail time. So she did plead guilty and there could be many reasons why you know if they were fighting to get the case dismissed. I mean especially cases like this it could run for years and probably the cost of even having an attorney or a lawyer for that long is super expensive and a lot of people just give up and take the plea deal because if you also don't take the plea deal and you're found guilty your punishment could be even worse recently in Massachusetts they proposed a bill that criminalizes suicide coercion so anyone who coerces or encourages individual to self-harm can be convicted and punished to jail time for up to five years called the Conrad law now whatever you say could impact someone immensely your words are very important just like your actions. So I have a little personal story that kind of contributes to my little two cents and I know a personal, and this person that I know was dating a significant someone. But in this case, this person that I know was the best person they can be for their significant other. You know, it wasn't a toxic relationship. They were trying to be the most supportive, you know, loving partner they can at their very young age they were in. Now, unfortunately, the person that I know significant other also ended up self-harming themselves and ended up passing away. Now, during their relationship, I did hear that the significant other would also send a lot of threats that they're going to self-harm themselves. And I've seen ones where, you know, I felt like this person was possibly dealing with certain mental conditions that they weren't diagnosed with. So it made me think, well, if this person that I knew was the opposite and was, you know, very negative, very toxic, would that have also affected the outcome? Because the person that I know tried to be the best they can, but still ended up having their significant other self-harming themselves. And it made me think maybe it wouldn't have affected the outcome and that this person really needed just the professional help that they could get. Of course, I'm not comparing this story to today's case at all because everything is case by case. And what we can learn from today's case is that, you know, if you know someone that's dealing, I think it's important to encourage them to get professional help. In conclusion, I think in this case, they both needed serious help. And your words are so important because they can and will manifest into the physical reality. I would like to know what you guys have thought about this case. When you're commenting, please be mature. I will delete any comments that is attacking, having profanity, and remember, do not be afraid to seek help. I seeked help when I was dealing with my severe anxiety and it's the best decision that I've made because these days we have a lot of technology that we also can get help from. You don't have to go somewhere physically or seem like it's impossible to get help. Thank you so much for watching and see you guys in my next video.